South Fork was in Edinburgh on Tuesday night for the classic rivalry between the Ponies and the Wildcats. Well, we knew it was going to be a tough game. We played football together. We know we're a bunch of tough guys. We knew that uh, it doesn't matter what your record is whenever you come to this game. Anybody's got a chance to win. It just seems like no matter what the schedules are, I've always said that, throw them out because we're going to get their best. They're going to get our best. It's always going to be a dog fight now. South Fork was the aggressor to start the game as they pounded the glass and scored inside. They also defended the paint well, like this block from Cody Dorsey. But Cortez Luttrell got the runner to fall early. Clayton Dees was Edinburgh's nightmare on Tuesday, doing a little bit of everything for the ponies. But Edinburgh found their outside shot with Tegan Wicks. And the ponies answered with Dominique Grant. Garrett Stevens wasn't afraid to go inside, and the two rivals just traded buckets in the first quarter. Stevens had seven in the first, and Grant had six for South Fork. Garrett got the bucket to fall at the buzzer, and it was tied at 14 after one. The second quarter was a little sloppy, but Clint Thomas got the three to go, and South Fork continued to go to D's inside. At the half, Edinburgh led 26 to 20 after the Ponies turned it over six times in the second quarter. Shane Eggerman got the Ponies going in the third. Uh, kind of a ground and pound type of offense. We just moved around, moved around, pounded in, inside. Felt like they couldn't stop us inside. Dees continued to score. So Edinburgh picked up the team pressure, especially Brody Walton with the hustle plays. Luke Crane nailed the baseline jumper, but South Fork just kept going back to D's. We were trying to front him, then we were trying not to let him catch the ball. Um, and I, you know, I've said that, I said that at the beginning of the season. I thought he has really improved his game. For the reason, he was just kind of getting what he wanted in the paint. We just really had no uh, answer for that. D scored eight of his 18 in the third quarter. But Garrett Stevens started to pick it up for Edinburgh. After D scored again, Jacob Powell decided to send a little message. So Grant picked up the slack and the ponies took a one point lead. But it was short lived with Stevens running things for Edinburgh. You just got to try to keep him out of the lane. We, I felt like we, we contested his shot, but again, late, he, he looked to put the ball on the ground and made a heck of a play, really, whenever we took the lead to come down. You know, that's, that's what you want your leader to do, put the ball in his hands, go to the rack, he gets an and one, you know, and that really turned the game right there as well. I just knew that we had to take the ball in the hole, draw fouls, try to get the buckets, and shots were really falling from the outside. The Ponies had a chance to tie, but then threw it away, so they were forced to foul. Edinburgh couldn't convert at the line, so South Fork got another opportunity with 19.2 to play, if they could get the ball in. Well, we just knew that we had to rush the ball and uh, try to get a five second call, get the ball back. Edinburgh got the ball in and finally got one to fall. and the ponies couldn't convert to cut into the short lead. It feels like we're, we're at kind of a hump. We've got to learn how to get over the hump and finish a ball game. Wicks finished it off at the line, and Enberg held on for a 47-42 win over South Fork. It's our second in a row, and we're getting into the rhythm, rhythm of conference games. We just got to keep pushing. We got to bounce back. You know, this is our rivalry week. We got Edinburgh tonight. We got Pawnee Friday. So if we, we let it sit on our shoulders too long, we'll, we'll lose Friday as well.